I was having to deal with uh, work and I was actually here in Hawaii and I was getting annoyed and irritated because I wanted to go surf and I kept having to um, deal with work responsibilities. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, but I just had this aha moment and I said to myself, wow, instead of being bummed out that I have to work while I'm here, I should actually be, be grateful that I have figured out how to be able to work while I'm here. And that was a big aha moment for me. It made me realize that I can do the job that I do and do it from anywhere. And that's when I started really embracing that concept. And that's when I truly found the balance of being able to do what I want to do and still perform and work and, you know, keep the ship afloat, so to speak. Welcome to the show. Today we have Calvin Cox and I have Calvin on the show because I keep hearing from people in their 20s that they want to work till they're 35, retire and live off their investments. Well, Calvin Cox is here to paint the picture of what that future looks like. It may take a little longer than you think. But Calvin Cox is a real estate investor, a mortgage company founder, a daily surfer, daily mountain bike rider, daily golfer former sponsored snowboarder, and he's going to talk today about how to live off your investments, which is a great goal. And like I said, a little bit of a different path. And he's going to talk about how to find your purpose, that coupled with working hard and a disciplined adherence to your plan might get you to that goal. Welcome to the show and welcome to the Edge of Excellence. Well, Calvin Cox, thank you very much for taking time away from the waves there in Hawaii and joining me on the Edge of Excellence. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Appreciate you coming here. I want to start off the way I always start off. What is your definition of excellence, Calvin Cox? My definition of excellence is to basically learn how to live your purpose. And so by living your purpose, are you naturally going to be excellent? I would say that it doesn't come naturally, or maybe it would for some, but it didn't come naturally for me. It was something that I always had sort of done, but I didn't realize that it was my actual purpose and made me truly happy until I did some work. So is there natural excellence in one's purpose? And if you find your purpose, you're naturally achieving excellence? Or are you saying, hey, excellence is finding your purpose and diligently working to achieve it? I would say that excellence is learning how to notice and find your purpose and embrace it and don't feel like it's wrong to live it. Okay. Well, this is an important day here on the Edge of Excellence podcast because we have found Gen Z's career poster child. And over the years, I've heard all sorts of people say different things about what they want to do for a living. And I spent a lot of time talking to people about their futures when they're young. And uh, I've heard everything that you can imagine, but there are some trends. And the trends, you know, a lot of times align with media. I see a lot of people that want to go into, uh, investment banking when billions is popular, the, the show, or house flipping, believe it or not, when uh, flipper flop is popular as a show. And lately, I've seen a trend of people that want to, quote, find a great job, which that's why we have the show, Calvin, is to help people figure out what that is, but quote, find a great job or start a business and make enough money to retire at 35 and manage their investments. So I thought to myself, wow, that sounds great. A lot of people call that retirement. Doesn't happen until you're way later than 35, but I don't think there's anybody out there that did that. And then I found it. Calvin Cox lives in Hawaii, surfs every day, manages his money, but unfortunately the bad news is 
He's older than 35 and he still does that job or business that he started with. And I think this is your future. If you want to go out there and have a great job or start a great business and make enough money to live off your investments by the time you're 35, more power to you. There are people that have done it. We've seen them before. But if you didn't invent Oculus or you didn't go out and raise $100 million and go to Harvard, probably more likely is you're going to follow the path of Calvin Cox here, who has a great life that he uh, out, uh, that he planned out early. And obviously, by the start of this talk, it seems like he might have gotten some grief for it. So you're looking for your purpose, Calvin. And how did you find us? Take us back to high school. What was going on in high school? What was going on in college? I know you're a sponsored snowboarder, living in Colorado, having a great life. How did you find your purpose? And what sort of naysayers did you face? Well, I mean, I, I, I feel like the, the finding my purpose didn't happen until my mid-40s. But in terms of what I was doing in high school and college, I was definitely having a lot of fun. And at the same time, I was also working more than most of my friends. Um, when I was in high school, I had two jobs. And when I was in college, I actually had three jobs um, throughout college. And so all of those things created a, a reality for me that I knew that I had to continue to work and at the same time figure out how to have fun. All right. So you didn't quite get it done in your 30s. You had to wait all the way, decade after decade after decade, well into your 40s to find your life's purpose. At the same time, oh my goodness, more decades from 25 to 35, 35 to 45. I know you're not 55 yet, but it's going to happen one of these days, 45 to 55, and you've been working the whole time, having a great time, living your uh, dream life, setting your own schedule, making plenty of money, doing whatever you want but it's okay to retire a little bit later because you enjoy your work, don't you? You enjoy the development. It's okay to find your purpose later because it's a fun progress, right? That's right. So let's go back to high school, Calvin. What was life like for you in high school? Um, what happened in high school that may have helped or hindered your progress to this life of freedom and uh, personal choice that you have now today? Well, when I was in high school, my both of my parents worked all the time, and my father was in law school. And so there was a, a need for me to still kind of do what I wanted, but I had to make my own money to do it. And so my high school jobs basically created the uh, the work ethic that has enabled me to accomplish what I've accomplished today. And I feel like because I had to work at such a young age, it got me used to and accustomed to the fact that working hard and, and, and continuing to focus on just having fun and having to work was, was okay. And it wasn't a bad, it wasn't a bad thing to have to work. So I have a lot of people on the show and everybody, basically everybody talks about work ethic, but if you want to live in Hawaii and Boulder, Colorado, if you want to surf every day, unless it's snowing, then you're snowboarding every day. You need to have balance, right? And when you were young, you're in high school, you got three jobs in college, you got three jobs, everybody's studying. You got to get to your 10,000 hours of work, right? So if you're working three hours a week, it takes a long time. If you're working, 20 hours or 80 hours a summer takes a long time. You have to learn to know how to work hard. So you're developing this work ethic. You're developing these passions for these sports. You're making this decision that, you know what? I want to do both. And then you started making some money. So there's some things that you did that maybe other people that were as successful as you that didn't do that enabled you to have this Hawaii lifestyle. So first of all, you started saving money early. So tell us about your saving early and what did you invest in? So one of the things that happened for me that um, 
really helped me understand the importance of saving was I met a uh, financial advisor guy that worked for Northwestern Mutual. And he basically showed me how saving just a little bit of money every single year would grow and grow and grow when I was in my 40s. And when I met him, I was 27. And so I started following his plan and his advice. And I started saving $25,000 a year. And I basically would uh, commit to giving him 2000 bucks a month. And I did that starting at 27. And now I'm 49 and I still do it today. That's one of the things that, that got me going. But that whole conversation and what he showed me made it clear to me how important it was to start saving early, even though I wanted to spend that money instead of save it. And so that, you know, $2,000 a month has now grown to almost a million bucks. And it was just because I socked away $2,000 a month with him and let him invest it. All right. So you start off with work ethic and you got that early and young. You're hanging out with Dillinger, watching the show in your free time. You're working at, you know, some restaurant or some uh, fast food joint uh, in your evening. You're going to school. You get that work ethic. You carry it into college. Then you start getting discipline, right? Which you know, there's people listening to the show right now, they're in college, you got to have a little bit of discipline, but maybe not a lot. So you look around, you're working, they're not. You're studying, they're not. You get this discipline. You start talking to some people, you find a mentor, and you know that you had friends that weren't investing when you were investing, right? You had, you're None saving of them two were. grand a month, and they're going into debt two grand a month, right? Correct. So, I, I, you mentioned a million bucks. I know there's, you know, a few other things that happened since then. So let's continue on. So you're saving, ignoring the naysayers. You guys go do what you want. I want to save my two grand a month. Go to the concert. I'm not going. Go to the game. I'm not going. Get a nicer, get an M6 convertible instead of the S5 piece of crap I'm driving. Um, and uh, it eventually moves into real estate. So talk about how you chose real estate as opposed to penny stocks or bonds or whatever else you could have chosen. Why did you choose real estate, especially since you're kind of in that industry? And how did your $2,000 a month extend to uh, you know, these, these buildings and, and places that you own around Colorado and Hawaii? So the whole concept of the saving the $2,000 a month just showed me that I could also start to save to, you know, invest in other things. And when I started dabbling in the mortgage business, I just was paying attention and noticing how some of the successful people that I was doing mortgages for were building wealth for themselves. And then I, you know, did the whole thing where I thought about how me and my roommates were paying for my landlord's mortgage payment. And so I decided that I was just going to save some money and buy a house and then have my own roommates pay my mortgage payment. And so I saved up a down payment for seven months and bought my first house in Boulder, Colorado. And I had four roommates, the same roommates that I had when we were all paying that landlord's mortgage payment. And we all moved into the house that I bought and they paid my mortgage payment. And that's how I bought my first house. Okay, so I, I'm just, you know, in case someone's driving right now, I suggest people listen at 1.5 speed because I sound better at that speed. Calvin sounds better at regular speed, but keep it at 1.5. So you start with the work ethic, you move to the discipline, then you got a plan, right? You got a plan, you're in the mortgage business. You're looking around, you realize, here's a goal. This is a, a, a area I want to focus on. And you start investing in real estate. And was there a pattern to it? Was it one, one thing a year? What, how did you figure out the pattern to real estate? How did you time the market, so to speak? How did you end up with the right portfolio of lofts as opposed to, I don't know, industrial buildings? How did you do it? Well, I wouldn't say that there was an actual plan. It was just, a, I'm going to save and get into my first house and then see what happens. And so after I lived in that house for five years, I sold it. And then that gave me enough money to buy two properties. So I bought a new house to live in with a couple new roommates. And then I bought my first investment property as well. 
And then, you know, from there, I just kept saving and, and would buy a property as soon as I would have enough money saved. And I just kept doing that over, I'm going to say, maybe 15 years. Okay. So, uh, and now today, um, and, and you're in Hawaii, you couldn't make it into the studio in California, uh, which is in my home office, by the way. Uh, you're in Hawaii in your home office. You're uh, enjoying the lifestyle out there. You're commuting back and forth to Boulder and Mexico and having this great time. Um, what do you do on a daily basis as a job? And I'm just wondering to myself, is it the job that you had when you were 35 or not? It is the same, but different. When I was 35, I had my own mortgage company and I sold my mortgage company to a bigger company when I was 39. Yes, 39, I sold my mortgage company. And the reason I decided to do that is because the way that this business works, the amount of freedom that I could have was much greater if I was just doing the duties of a, of a loan officer and being available to help people versus managing 30 people and dealing with all the headaches that I had gotten used to dealing with when I owned the company. So you you have an allegiance to your plan. So you're vetting your decisions. You got a business. You sell a business because you want more freedom. And it always been about that goal. And I I kind of laugh when I hear it, Calvin. I got to tell you, uh, what do you want to do for a living? Well, I want to start a business and make enough money to manage my investors when I'm 35. Like no shit. Um, what do you want to do? I want to get a great job so I could manage my investments when I'm 35. I don't know that you would have ever said that when you were in your 20s, but you live it. The, there's just some disconnect, right? So there's the work ethic part, which a lot of the people I talk to have really strong work ethic because I'm talking to people that work in my wonderful business. Um, second, uh, discipline. Again, you've got some serious strong discipline. A lot of them do, but you have this plan. They have a plan too. And you're continually looking at the plan, making decisions, evolving the plan with this end in mind. But the end didn't come at 35. So how do you stay sane Still doing what you did in your 20s and 30s and 40s, just like I do, by the way, um, while you're managing your investments, while you're living this life. How do you stay sane still having to do the job part, the work part, the discipline part, and you can't just party from 35 to 55? It has to do with uh, finding a balance and understanding what it is that you need to to be able to, to continue to out, to not get burned out. And for me, I just reached this point and it was kind of like the time where I, it was like an aha moment for me. And it was when I was, cause I have always been, I've always traveled a lot because I, it, that it earlier in my life, I didn't live in Hawaii. And so I have a very big passion for surfing. And so I would always have to travel to surf. And there was a point in my early 40s when I was having to deal with uh, work and I was actually here in Hawaii and I was getting annoyed and irritated because I wanted to go surf and I kept having to um, deal with work responsibilities. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, but I just had this aha moment and I said to myself, wow. Instead of being bummed out that I have to work while I'm here, I should actually be, be grateful that I have figured out how to be able to work while I'm here. And that was a big aha moment for me. It made me realize that I can do the job that I do and do it from anywhere. And that's when I started really embracing that concept. And that's when I truly found the balance of being able to do what I want to do and still perform and work and, you know, keep the ship afloat, so to speak. I think if you were a doctor, you could have done the same thing. No. Why? Well, I think so. I think that if you can figure out a way to support your, your clients and take care of the people that you have, you know, 
worked with over the years and you can do it remotely, then yeah, I do think so. You think if you were a lawyer, you could do the same thing? Yes. You think if you were a yacht salesman, you could do the same thing? I do. I think that you can do the same thing unless you have a job that you have to be hands-on with people and you know that that's the career that you choose, then I'm sure there's probably a way to figure out a balance with that too. But I say, generally speaking, yes, you can accomplish it with most, with most businesses. Yeah, so the disconnect sometimes is how hard do you have to work and how long do you have to work and the disconnect with how awesome work is. I mean, you love your job. I love my job. I love, you know, closing deals. I love winning. I love hitting goals. I love the sparkle in people's eyes that I work with. I love, you know, doing these podcasts, which are fun. You love saving people some money. You love watching their eyes light up when it's not the biggest pain in their ass to get a mortgage. You treat people right. You've got all these tenants that work. You love giving them a great home and a great service. We love what we do. And I think there's a disconnect with, hey, I won't like to work when I'm 35. No, you're going to love to work. Um, uh, I can build this thing and just eject from it. Yeah, there are people that do it, but you may not want to and respect where you come from. And you've had hard work, discipline, a plan, decisiveness and evolution the whole time. So you, you may be like, I used to want to retire when I was 15. Then I decided I like working. So I evolved. Now I'm not going to work 100 hours a week. Um, and I think there's a little bit of disconnect with those elements. Um, so back in uh, college, uh, you're hanging out, you're living in Boulder, you've got all these buddies that you're out snowboarding with, you're sponsored, you got all these professional snowboarding buddies that are winning X Games trophies, and or I guess they're not trophies, they're medals, uh, having a great time. Did you start to see a difference between yourself and other people then, especially the pro athlete world? Were you seeing some different behavior in the pro athlete world from where you were living in the uh, kind of heading towards business world? Yeah, I mean, they they were definitely um, living a different lifestyle than I was. But at the same time, when when we were together, I was still having just as much fun as they were. But um, I think that some of them have gone on to to, you know, figure out ways to continue their success because everyone's older and then some haven't. So there were people that you knew that were making a bunch of money, maybe not making a lot of money, some of them, but they're living their dream at uh, their active as pro athletes. And there's a parallel in their life. Some of them had the evolution and became the announcer for the X games. And some of them had an evolution and went into media or products or, you know, different businesses. And some kind of didn't have that discipline, didn't have that hard work. And when the body gave out in their late twenties, so did that kind of momentum towards that manage my investments when I'm 35 goal. I would say that that is a true statement. Okay, um, you a witness. I, I want to call hostile witness here. Uh, first of all, he did not prepare his definition of excellence prior to the show. And second of all, he hasn't disclosed that I was with him for most of these experiences in high school and college. <laughs> uh, we will move on, Calvin. Um, so uh, you're sitting back in Albuquerque, New Mexico, going down to... Uh, the valley to visit your buddies and uh, watch punk rock shows. How does where you sit now, how does that fit with what your vision was back in the day? Are you surprised or is this, is this exactly where you thought you'd be? I, that's a good question. I would say that I didn't know where I wanted to be back then. It was, it, I was still figuring things out and figuring myself out. And so, you know, the only thing that that I know now that I also knew then was how important it was for me to know that I was having fun. Do you have fun at work? Yes. You having fun with the podcast? Having a blast. All right. Uh, well, this is kind of my work. You know, I do it as a passion play, but it's, you know, kind of my work. And you can have a good time if you're listening to this. You want the freedom of living in Hawaii. You want or living where you want to live. You want to snowboard and surf every day. You want to work four in the morning till noon or noon till eight or skip a day or not a day. But it's hard work. It's discipline. It's planning. It's decisiveness. It's evolution. All right, Calvin, I got one last question for you. It's my favorite question for every guest. Think back to your 20s. And it doesn't sound like you made too many sacrifices. 
And it sounds like you have a little bit of love for serendipity and you find some awesome opportunities, but there must have been one or two you made. What sacrifices did you make in your 20s that you'll never regret? When I was in my 20s, I had, uh, in Boulder, Colorado, I had four roommates, and none of them had to work, and I was the only one that had to work. Were they from and, California? Um, two of them were, yes. And was the other one's initials DIF? Possibly. Okay. And one of the things that used to really bother me back then was how I always had to work and I felt like I'd always missed out on everything that they were doing. And now today I look back at that and I don't regret having to, to support myself and creating the work ethic that I did because now today I know for sure that I am, my life is awesome. Like my life is so awesome. I can't even believe that I live in Hawaii. I mean, it's still amazing to me. Yeah. Balance is not a daily thing. Balance is not a weekly thing. Balance is not a monthly thing. Balance is not a yearly thing. Balance is a life thing that encompasses all of that other. That's right. So you don't need to be balanced today, but you probably need to be somewhat balanced this month. And you probably need to be somewhat balanced this year, but there's a difference in your balance when you're in your 20s and when you're in your 50s. And if you work a little harder like Calvin did and kind of ignore the naysayers like Calvin did and live beneath your means, like I was going to say Calvin and I did, but not true, like <laughs> Calvin did. <laughs> When you're a little older, no. facing the last half, or I don't know, Calvin, you might get some nanobots stuck in your body in the next couple of years to save you from any sort of diseases. You might live 150 years. You work hard for the first 30 or 40. You work medium for the next 20 or 30. You work less later. You learn to love work. You learn to love the discipline. You learn to learn to love the evolution. And you too can circle between Hawaii Cabo and Boulder, Colorado. Thank you, Calvin, so much for taking time out of the busy surf week to join me on the show. And thank you for helping us help others cross over the edge of excellence. You're welcome, Matt. 